Hello and welcome to another video. Today we're going to be checking out this Athlon 3000G. This is a £50 APU from 2019 and when it came out it was the darling of the budget PC space. But does it still hold up two and a half years later? The Athlon 3000G has two 14 nanometer Zen 1 cores with hyperthreading enabled. Clocked at 3500 MHz, they aren't the speediest of L, but with some light overclocking, they can easily reach 4 GHz. For GPU, we have the Vega 3, featuring three Vega CUs, clocked at 1100 MHz, but again, they are easily overclockable. The low price of the APU made it one of the best options for budget PC gaming thanks to its tremendous upgrade path. You could go from this, the lowest end CPU on the AM4 platform, all the way to a 16 core with only a BIOS upgrade. During the great PC shortage of last year, I saw that what was meant to be a £50 APU was selling for upwards of 90 on places like eBay and was sold out on Amazon and other PC retailers. But finally, it's come down in price and can now be found on eBay for around MSRP. I got mine from Facebook Marketplace for just £20. A veritable bargain compared to what they used to sell for. Today, I'm going to be running it in my main system on an MSI B450 gaming motherboard with 16GB of DDR4 3200MHz CL16 and a Noctua NHU12S with a very quiet fan profile for all the case fans as well. In terms of overclocking, I've got it set to 3.95GHz with a core voltage of 1.28V and a GPU clock of 1600MHz with a GPU voltage of 1.3V. This is a pretty tame overclock from what I've seen, especially with a cooler this large, but I didn't want to brick my processor, and this is pretty indicative of what you could get with an APU like this. The performance uplift can vary from application to application, but in Cinebench R15, it went from a score of 374 to 418, a 12% increase. And the points from the GPU score went from 43 FPS to 51 FPS, a 17% increase. But those are synthetic tests, and those performance uplifts might not transfer to the real world. But we'll just have to see in the benchmarks. First up is Doom Eternal. This was run at 720p with the low setting selected, and with my standard gameplay benchmark, it achieves an average of 40fps, with 1% lows of 23fps and 0.1% lows of 7fps. Now, there were some frame pacing issues, but that could be fixed with the frame rate cap. And if this was my only way to play, I would be more than happy. Next up was Remedies Control. This game features a resolution scaler, which I've used to get an internal resolution of 540p, along with the low settings to achieve an average of 33fps with 1% lows of 22fps and 0.1% lows of 3fps. Please note that the pro recordings are not due to the APU's performance, rather my capture laptop just couldn't encode it. So I'm sorry for all the stuttery recordings, but it's not an APU problem, it's a laptop problem. Hitman 2 was run at 720p low, and on the in-game benchmark on the Miami map, it achieved an average of 28fps, with 1% lows of 11fps and 0.1% lows of 8fps. I find that around 25fps is enough to play this game, so this is really serviceable for me. On the CSGO community benchmark map at 1080p low settings, it achieves an average of 57 FPS, and this benchmark is a lot more intensive than regular gameplay, so expect a lot more FPS than that normally. Beam and G Drive was run at 900p on the lowest preset, and achieved an average of 35 FPS on the jungle map, with 1% lows of 25 FPS and 0.1% lows of 24 FPS. This is one of the harder maps to run, so simpler ones like Cliff will run way better. And even on this hard map, it was still a great experience. Fortnite just seems to get weirder and weirder every time I play it. Despite this, it was run at 1080p with a 3D internal resolution scale of 75% on the low settings and achieved an average of 59 FPS with 1% lows of 11 FPS and 0.1% lows of 7 FPS, which were due to lag spikes on being on the battle bus.
Minecraft with Seuss Traders at 720p with a render distance of 6 chunks achieved an average of 20 FPS with 1% lows of 11 FPS and 0.1% lows of 6 FPS. Without a frame counter, I find 20 FPS on shaders to be perfectly playable, but your valid mileage may vary with that. Some more ray tracing now with Teardown at 1366 by 768 with a 75% resolution scale on low settings. It achieves an average of 25 FPS with 1% lows of 1 FPS and 0.1% lows of 0 FPS. In normal gameplay you'll normally get a bit more, but it will get loaded down to those settings and you will have to squint quite hard to see what's happening. My final gaming test today is Halo Infinite and at 1080p with a 75% resolution scale, an adaptive scaling target of 60fps on the low settings it achieved an average of 31fps in an online match. It looked pretty smeary, but that is the price you have to pay with an APU like this in 2022. My Unit in Heaven benchmark is a good way of comparing different graphics cards, and as you can see, the Athlon 3000G's Vega 3 achieves an average of 192 points with an FPS of 8 on the Extreme benchmark and 373 points with an FPS of 15 on the Normal benchmark. Surprisingly, this is a lot more than half of the Vega 8's score, which doesn't really make sense, but I guess it's not overclocked and, and weird in my opinion. So that's the Athlon 3000G, and it seems to be holding up okay, even three years later. It was never meant for AAA gaming really, but it can still manage it. Now due to the age, I think it has lost some of its value, but what that it used to have. But if you can find it for a price like mine, and need it for a really cheap AM4 entry point, then it is a no brainer. Seeing the performance of these older GPUs and CPU cores has really made me hopeful for the Valve Steam Deck and the RDNA 2 graphics. And I have a bit script writ written on the script here, but I'm going to go off that. From my testing so far, the Steam Deck seems to be a lot better than these RDNA 2 graphics, so stay tuned for my review on that, and thank you very much for watching this video. Please comment, like, and subscribe, and stay tuned for my next one, which will probably be the Steam Deck review, probably sometime in July. Ciao.